Hello again. I am past the days of 20 to 30 degree temperatures and a lot of wind. So today it's all the way up to 39 degrees and there's very little wind and it's sunny. So that's my minimum temperature that I'm willing to work in. All right, so let me show you what I did, what I've been doing and what I'm going to do once again. So on that day, the last day before the cold spell hit, I went in and I discussed how I was going to trim all of this. Let me go ahead and just aim the camera and I'll discuss and show at the same time. Okay, so this was very much like a frown. It was even. What I did was I went in and from, let's say, here to here, I straightened out this line as much as I could. My limiting factor was right here. I couldn't really change this and I'll show you in a minute why. So. From this line back is pretty much constrained by what I'm going to discuss on this inner edge that controls this. So what I was able to change was that in front. So I got this line as straight as I could get it. Then I went in and decided this was about, I don't know, somewhere between an inch, three quarters of an inch too tall. So I went in and I hand drew this new curve where I wanted it. Uh, once I did that, I came in with a cutter and I cut this down to that height. What I ended up with was that uh, pink foam on the inside was all the way up to here. This area right here is a combination of um, plaster, plaster of Paris, and body filler. Uh, plaster of Paris only where I sanded through the body filler to get the shape I wanted. So this area right here is plaster. It's not even attached. If I, I could just pick this off with my fingernail. Uh, so I'll have to pull, I'll have to literally do that and put a little uh, body filler there so this has a little bit of substance to it. Not critical, but anyway, it's an option. Um, so once I did that, what I have to do, uh, came in and rounded the edge. Then the foam was right up to the edge of the plaster or body filler, whichever the edge happened to be. What I had was one of these panels like this, right here. And it is the inside of the eyebrow like I wanted. So the shape was already there from the mold. I didn't want to have to recreate that shape because if I recreate it here, then I got to recreate it there. If I use an existing body panel here, then I can use the same existing body panel, the mirror image from the opposite side over there, saves me a whole lot of body work. The advantage is that the surface of these body panels is almost perfect. It's flat, it's even, uh, not a lot of waves. If I do it from scratch, then I've got to get it flat, even without the waves and all that. So this saves me probably several hours, if not a half a day to a day worth of body work, reusing every panel that I can possibly use. Okay, so then what I did was I cut this panel out. It was uh, temporarily attached, so I cut a notch in here. And when I cut this curve the way I wanted, I saw that if I move this back about two inches, that it matches the curve where I wanted. So that's what I did, was I cut it, moved it back two inches, and put some screws in here to hold it in place. But before I put the screws in, what I did was I went into the foam and cut the foam down the thickness of this piece. So then that allowed me to put this piece on top of here, screw it in, and it was in exactly the place where it went. So before, so then I pulled this off, I put tape on top of the foam because the uh, polyester resin eats that pink foam. Uh, not as bad as styrofoam. Styrofoam it eats on contact. The pink foam it eats at it so you end up with a, a crummy surface. It ends up all rough and bubbly where the fiberglass or the resin actually ate the foam. So what I did was I put some uh, fiberglass reinforced tape on top of the foam and I actually ran it up onto the edge. Then I put a couple layers of uh, fiberglass mat on top of that. So what I did was I put the tape down, I put resin down to wet the surface. Then I put two layers of the fiberglass mat on top of that. I put this piece on top and then I screwed it in place to get it to where it was even. Once I did that, there was obviously a little bit of a gap along here and that was actually intentional. So I crammed some of the fiberglass mat down in that gap, filled it with resin, and then I put one last layer of fiberglass mat on top of this so that it went over that edge. I don't like ouch, using fiberglass mat for the reason that we have here. 
is all those little fiberglass hairs, uh, once they get resin on them, they're like little needles sticking out. So unfortunately what I've got to do is come back here, get rid of all those high spots and get this to a reasonable level. Then I can either put a layer of fiberglass cloth, which lays a lot smoother, or I can just skip that and put a uh, body filler on top of this and then sand it. Ouch, I do have a piece of fiberglass in my finger. It hurts. Uh, anyway, I can do that. All right, so that's where we're at now. I didn't even get to mess with the, the running board and the guttering. Uh, hopefully I'll do that today. Okay, so let's discuss a couple other things. All right, so when I trimmed this, there's the piece I cut off right here. This used to be right there. I purposely cut it to the trunk line right here. The reason why is this hatch and this trunk have to be able to be opened. All right, so if you look, right there's where the edge of the trunk is. The edge of the hatch also starts here, ends up here, but I don't know exactly where that curve is in between. There's some line that connects those two. I don't know exactly where that is. All right, so I did this so that now I, at least I have a point right here where I can see exactly where that corner is. So all I need to do is say, oh, what's the line look like in between here? Okay, where I can get that line is the other side. So if I come over here, I can see exactly uh, what this line looks like. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of my brown paper, put it on here, align it here, because that's a factory. I know it's exact. I know that's an alignment point that's gonna exist on the other side. Lay it down, cut it all the way to the edge, all the way to here. So I have a piece of brown, brown paper that follows this shape. Once I do that, I can flip it over, come over to this side, and I can align it right here which is my reference point over there. It'll follow this curve. I can't see what's going on here, but it will lay on top of this. And then I can line the back corner right here. So then I will have that shape. Now, because it's laying down, it's going to pull in a little bit, which actually isn't a bad thing because it'll give me some room to cut. So then once I do that, I'll draw a line of where that shape is and I'll cut that. And that'll allow me to remove this piece. And what I'll do, I'll make some alignment marks so that once I remove it, I can put it back in place. But anyway, I'll do that. And then I've got to create this wall that you see right here. Okay, and what that does, there is the uh, C8 body panel would be under here with the mounting points. Again, I want to use all the C8 mounting points I can. So this is going to tie my body to the C8. Once I do that, I can cut out all of this inside structure. People are complaining about, oh, you're adding a whole bunch of fiberglass, a whole bunch of weight. No, I'm not. Because once I get all this done, all this stuff goes away. I'm gonna go on the inside and pull this panel off and the inside cut away all of this stuff. Then I'll put a layer or two on the back side of this to reinforce all of it, but I won't have any extraneous fiberglass going all over the place. One of the other things is on the C8, there is a body line somewhere around right here. We can go look at the other one and see where it is. And that's where the back bolts to this. If I don't do that, it's going to be very difficult to get this piece off and back on because it's going to wrap around the front here. So it's basically would be a solid U shape that I would have to flex open, then get it in there and then flex it back in. Instead of doing that, I'm going to make this side panel a removable, sorry, I hit my crown, removable side panel. The back will be removable as well, and I will go back to using the factory mounting points there. Okay, so that's my plan for the day. If I get done with this, then I'll go on to the running board, but I at least have got to do that. And I don't have to build that vertical piece, but if I do, that will allow me to completely finish this part right here, and I could actually sand it and paint it and make it look nice, as nice as it can with rattle can. I'm not going to go past rattle can until I get this a lot further. Um, so anyway, that's my plan for today. Um, you can see here, I'll stand back. So you can see how I smooth, lowered and smoothed that eyebrow a little bit. Okay, so that is the shape it's going to be. So once I get that done, then I'll copy it over to the other side. All right, well, like, subscribe, 
and I will see you next time. Oh, and hit that bell. Bye.